After playing a horror video game called Stay Alive, Loomis Crowley calls his friend Hutch and invites him to his place to play with him. However, Hutch says he can't, so they agree to see each other that weekend instead. Then, Loomis goes upstairs when he hears a sound, but it's just his other buddy Rex having fun with his girlfriend Sarah. After that, Loomis has a nightmare about the video game, wherein his character died by being hanged, so he goes downstairs to drink some milk, unaware he's being watched. Unfortunately, it isn't long before a shadow appears and sends him running upstairs, where he finds his friends brutally killed. Then, a chain suddenly wraps around Loomis' neck and hangs him, killing him instantly. Meanwhile, Hutch thinks he's in trouble at work, only to find out that his boss, Miller, is upset because his character died in a video game. So Hutch just gives his boss some advice on how to play it, and the man instantly becomes happy. Then, Hutch's colleague informs him he has a phone call, and he learns about Loomis and his other friend's death. At the funeral, Abigail approaches Loomis and takes his picture, introducing herself as Sarah's friend. Then, Loomis' sister, Emma, walks up to Hutch and gives him her brother's bag containing his video games. After that, Abigail gives Hutch her number, telling him he can call her if he needs someone to talk to. Moments later, Hutch visits his friend October and her brother Phineas. October wants to know what happened, but all Hutch knows is that Loomis and his two other friends were killed. Then, October takes a look at Loomis' stuff and sees an old picture of him with Hutch when they were kids. Meanwhile, Phineas plays with Loomis lighter, reminding Hutch of a fire accident when he was young. Seconds later, Phineas finds the game Stay Alive in Loomis' bag, and Hutch informs him that that was the game Loomis was playing out the night he died. He also adds that Loomis invited him to play with him, but he refused, making him feel guilty. However, October tells him it's not his fault, saying he didn't know what would happen. On the other hand, Phineas wonders how Loomis got the video game, so Hutch explains Loomis did some beta testing, making Phineas eager to try it too. However, Hutch says it would be weird since that was the last thing Loomis was doing before he died. But despite that, Phineas points out that if Loomis was indeed testing that game, it means it's barely legal. Later that day, Hutch's other friend, Swink, arrives at his place, together with Phineas and October. Then, Abigail shows up too, so Hutch introduces her to everyone before she goes to the bathroom. Meanwhile, the others set up their equipment to play Stay Alive. Moments later, everyone starts playing the game, and Miller joins them online from his office. As the game begins, they realize they're supposed to read the prayer of Elizabeth before they can advance, which means it's voice activated. So, they all recite Elizabeth's prayer that asks for eternal beauty using the blood of her victims, and the game tells them that they've made a grave mistake when they spoke the words. The game states they will die for it, adding that they've been marked for death. However, Hutch and his friends just ignore it and continue to choose their characters. Then, the game tells them to uncover the horrible truth about Garuj Plantation, and October swears she's heard about that story before. Seconds later, Hutch makes his first kill in the game, and they learn that they can use a rose to escape ghosts they can't face. Then, as they go through a cemetery and fight evil ghost children, Miller enters a mausoleum on the other's head to a tower. There, they find a secret room where the portrait of Countess Elizabeth Bathory is displayed. They also see her diary, the one from the beginning of the game with a prayer in it. Meanwhile, Miller explores the tunnels in the mausoleum and tells the group his controller keeps vibrating, adding that he's out of roses. Then, he describes the torture chamber he's in, but it isn't long before the Countess attacks and stabs him in the neck. So he tells Phineas how to get to the chamber, but he's distracted when he sees someone running outside his office. However, he tries to ignore it, thinking someone's just trying to scare him. On the other hand, October thinks they should call it a night so Hutch tells Miller they can rejoin them when they play again. Unfortunately, someone opens Miller's office door when he's about to go home, and when he takes out his keys to lock it, he doesn't notice the dark figure standing at the end of the corridor. Then, the door reopens, leaving Miller with no choice but to return to his office and see if someone's there. However, after finding his controller, Miller gets attacked by the dark figure, which turns out to be the Countess. The next day, Hutch is horrified to discover that Miller is dead. Then, two detectives, Tip and King interview Hutch, learning that Miller was playing a game with him and his friends online before he died. However, King starts to suspect Hutch when he discovers he lives near the office, but his partner tells him to chill. After that, Thibodeau gives Hutch his number, saying they may need to speak to each other again. Sadly, as the detectives leave, Hutch sees Miller's body from his office. Later that day, Phineas finds Miller's character in the game. However, Hutch is too upset to look at it, but that doesn't stop Phineas from urging them to play Stay 
alive. Unfortunately, Hutch and Abigail get pissed at him because of that, so Phineas tells him to leave so he can play alone. Moments later, October asks Abigail her story, and she reveals she grew up in Georgia and will go to Princeton in the fall. Then, October starts to smoke beside Hutch, triggering a memory he's trying to forget. Concerned, Abigail asks Hutch what's wrong, but he doesn't want to talk about it and just says he has a thing with fire. Then, they talk about Miller's death, finding it weird that he died in the same way his character did. Because of that, Hutch remembers how Loomis and his friends were killed after playing the game, so he quickly leaves to check on Phineas. Meanwhile, Phineas plays the game alone and uses a mirror to see where the Countess is. Then, the mirror breaks because the Countess hates mirrors, so he flips it over and sees a carriage approaching his character. However, Phineas pauses the game before he finishes, and a few minutes later, his friends arrive and find him smoking. Hutch tries to tell him that maybe it's not a coincidence that Loomis and Miller died the same way their characters did, but Phineas just tells him he's freaking everyone out. Later on, Phineas goes outside to fix his car while Hutch shaves in the bathroom, revealing the scars he got from the fire. Then, he sees his reflection change in the mirror before it breaks, but it soon goes back to normal. On the other hand, Swank doesn't notice the blood leaking from his keyboard and accidentally wipes it on his face. However, he realizes it's not real and starts researching perceptive reality. Meanwhile, October sees a dead girl in the mirror, and at the same time, Phineas hears an approaching carriage before almost getting hit by a vehicle. After that, Hutch goes to the office to learn more about Loomis and Miller's death. However, he doesn't notice the dead girl walking down the corridor and just leaves with the incident reports. He then shows the reports to his friends and points out that Loomis, Rex, Sarah, and Miller all die the same way their characters did in the game, insisting that can't be a coincidence. Because of that, October agrees with him and tells him the story of Garuge, which she heard from her grandmother. According to October, the game is based on the life of Countess Elizabeth Bathory, who'd hunt for victims in a black carriage and gut them with silver shears. At the same time, the woman hated mirrors because she couldn't stand to see herself get old. Then, she adds that the Countess was walled up in her tower alive, but she promised to return one day, so October thinks that the Countess is back to kill them once they die in the game. Meanwhile, Phineas swerves to avoid a woman on the road. Then, he talks to October and his friends on the phone, telling them where he is. He also asks Swink about perceptive reality, saying he's been seeing and hearing things lately. So, Phineas' friends leave to pick him up, but it isn't long before a black carriage runs him down. Moments later, Hutch and his friends find Phineas' body on the road, so they immediately call Thibodeau and King. Hutch then tells the detectives about his theory, but Thibodeau doesn't believe him and talks to him privately, because he's starting to suspect him too. Meanwhile, King starts playing the game to see what the fuss is all about, and Hutch immediately stops him as soon as he sees him. Once the detectives are gone, October blames Hutch for Phineas' death, asking him why he brought that game into their lives. However, all Hutch can do is apologize, so October instructs him to find out everything he can about that game, while she plans to look for the person who killed Phineas. On the other hand, King learns from a video game shop owner that Stay Alive is an underground game and quickly informs Thibodeau. Unfortunately, Unfortunately, before he can leave, King gets brutally killed in his car. Concurrently, Hutch and Abigail go to Loomis' house to find out anything about the game. There, Hutch reveals that his father burned their house because he thought his wife was sleeping around. Unfortunately, Hutch was the only one who survived, and he feels guilty for not trying to stop his father. A few minutes later, Hutch finally gets inside the house through a window and opens the door for Abigail. After looking around the house, Hutch and Abigail find the address of the game company Loomis tested for. Hutch then talks to Swink on the phone and gives him the address so he can guide them on their way there. On the other hand, October tells Hutch about the information she just learned from a book, which states that they need to put three nails through the Countess' heart, neck, and forehead to force her human spirit back into her body. At the same time, October adds that an undead soul is only cleansed by burning its blood, also pointing out that a strong enough spirit can be brought back with a proper text. Seconds later, they learn from the news that King is dead, and it isn't long before the the cops show up at Hutch's place. So, Swank and October quickly pack their stuff and leave through the fire exit to meet Hutch at Loomis' house. While on the other hand, the cops find an article about the Countess. Meanwhile, Hutch starts to think that the Countess' diary might hold the answers to their questions, and tells Swank about it when he arrives with October. Then, they realize the game is on and see October's character, making them wonder where she is. At the same time, 
October sees a dead girl and follows her inside an abandoned property. Realizing the game is playing by itself, Hutch and his friends quickly look for October, who's searching for the girl. October then takes a nail gun and attacks the Countess when she sees her, but the Countess remains unharmed because she is a ghost. So October tries to flee, but the Countess catches her using a shackle and hangs her by the ankle. Unfortunately, the Countess slits October's throat before her friends find her. Later on, Swink and Hutch blame themselves for what happened. So Abigail admits she lied about her life, and she's not really going to Princeton to change the subject. After that, Hutch and Abigail go to the game company's location, while Swink stays in the van to play the game until they end their problem. Then, Swink calls Hutch while playing the game and tells him where to go until he reaches the Iron Gates, where he finds the cemetery and tower, making him realize it's the real Gerouge Plantation. On the other hand, Abigail finds a doll that looks exactly like the Countess before going to a room upstairs. Then, Abigail realizes the room looks exactly like the one in the game and goes inside the wardrobe, leading to a different part of the house. There, she sees pictures and articles about the Gerouge Plantation, and she also finds the Countess Silver Shears. It isn't long before Abigail discovers the Countess Diary and sees the names of the young girls she killed. Unfortunately, it suddenly becomes dark, and all Abigail can do is scream. Meanwhile, Hutch rushes back to the house upon hearing Abigail and asks Swink where he should go. Thanks to Swink, who unlocks every door in the game for Hutch, the guy eventually reaches the wardrobe. However, the Countess is about to kill Abigail, so Swink throws roses at the evil ghost in the game to send her away. Hutch kisses Abigail upon rescuing her, and the two listen as Swink tells him to find three nails and get the roses. Meanwhile, the van door suddenly closed with Swink's computer inside, but he manages to save his character in the game when the Countess tries to kill him. Then, Swink breaks into the van and continues playing the game, but the Countess comes for him in real life, even though his character is still alive. With no other choice, Swink runs for his life as the Countess chases him in her carriage, and he trips over a bush of roses. On the other hand, Hutch and Abigail reach the van and find Swink's character in the game dead, so they collect roses and nails before fleeing as the carriage comes after them. Then, Hutch locks Abigail inside the mausoleum and uses one rose to send the Countess away. After that, Hutch and Abigail go to the torture chamber, ready to use the roses whenever necessary. Then, upon reaching the place, Hutch immediately heads to the stairs leading to the tower. However, Abigail gets separated from him when the door suddenly closes, and she urges Hutch to leave her since they don't have enough time. So Hutch gives Abigail a rose, and in return, she hands him a lighter. Moments later, Hutch finds the Countess body in the tower and starts driving nails into her body. Meanwhile, the Countess ghost hangs Abigail upside down and prepares to kill her but she disappears when Hutch hammers the last nail into her forehead. Unfortunately, the Countess gets up, and the nails that were driven into her body drop on the floor. Because of that, Hutch uses the reflective laptop to keep the Countess at bay before setting the room on fire. However, Hutch gets trapped with the Countess, but Swink, who is revealed to be alive because of the rosebush, rescues him with Abigail's help. Then, the three flee as the Countess' body burns, and Hutch takes one last look at the tower before finally leaving. Meanwhile, the video game shop owner receives a copy of Stay Alive and eagerly tries it out. At the same time, the store starts selling copies of it, and it isn't long before the prayer of Elizabeth is recited again.